Today I'm here to talk about goal setting. It's a topic that comes up with um, probably every single client that I work with in any capacity simply because of the structure of coaching. The idea is that you have somewhere that you're trying to go and for some reason you need some support to get there and it can be you know, a whole variety of reasons. It can have to do with being really clear on the vision, you know, where you're trying to go or what you really want. Um, and it can also be knowing very clearly what you want, but just trying to figure out how to get there or perceiving certain roadblocks along the way and feeling really stuck in terms of gathering momentum. Um, so with pretty much every client that I'm working with, it's gonna come up, you know, how, how do we set some goals to make sure that you're moving forward? And there are a lot of different ways that people get stuck. Um, so what I'm going to share with you today is just a way of thinking about your goals um, and then we'll, we're going to do a little bit of a little bit of an exercise um, to see how that might help you um, sort of flesh some things out as you think about the year ahead. Okay. I coined this acronym "Vital" just as a as a memory hook. How many of you sometimes feel that your goal is like <laughs> climbing a mountain? <laughs> Long way to go, right? <clears throat> but this is your vision, right? However big, you know, maybe it's a smaller mountain, maybe it varies depending on the goal. But you have a vision for what you're trying to accomplish. And, you know, it's somewhere out here in the distance. There's usually a time frame that's associated with it. Um, when I'm working with clients, we tend to start with a year. You know, tell me where you'd like to be a year from now, and V is your vision. Just imagine it, just get in it. Get here, be here. This is not about yet the journey, which I'll come to in a minute, but this is really a visualization exercise. You know, put yourself at the end of 2015, put yourself at this time next year, and Really imagine where you want to be from a professional and personal goals standpoint. What do you know about this picture? How big is the mountain? You know, what kind of flowers are growing on top? What are you doing up there, right? And you know, from a business perspective, it's probably you know something like <laughs> a dollar sign um, or a number of clients. But you know a lot about this, and so spending time here on your vision and getting as clear as you can and capturing what you know. That's the V. When we come to I, I'm asking you to imagine the journey, right? And that's where your brain kicks into this sort of planning mode, right? So a year from now, if I'm gonna be there, what do I imagine I'm gonna have to be doing along the way, right? And the liberating thing at this stage is that we're not, you know, we're not mapping these sort of corporate terms like goals and strategies and tactics onto it, which is when we sort of really get into um, a fix sometimes because we haven't, we just haven't allowed ourselves to like think about the big picture. So this is just imagining where you want to be and imagining how you're going to get there. So imagine the journey, okay? When you know everything that you know about those two things, that's when you translate it into goals and strategies, okay? That's when you put it down on paper. You know what, by this time next year, it's this number, you know, this amount in revenue, it's this number of clients. Um, what other metrics do you use when you're thinking about your goals? I know dollars are the big one. Size of project. Size of project, okay, like number and size of certain projects. What else? Type of project. Types of projects, okay. Give me an example. Oh, for example, um, maybe not doing so many house renovations. <laughs> okay, what you don't want to be doing anymore, what you do want to be doing, right? So, a little bit of, of ruling out. And we'll talk a little ruling bit more. Ruling out, that's good. Ruling out. Okay. Want more of this and less of this. So there are there are metrics, but you know, very often there's you know 
there's a dollar associated, there's a number, you said there's a type. Maybe it's um, you know adding employees, right? If you're in if you're in growth mode or getting to the tipping point where that's something that makes sense to do. Okay? So that's where you're defining your goals. Bang, bang, bang. Okay? And the strategies are the how. So how do you how do you get less of that and more of that? I'm curious. Well, uh, hmm. <laughs> okay, we'll come back to it. You can you can uh, noodle on that one. But this is you know this is this is the how that gets to what you want, right? So you know from a you know the standpoint of my own experience as a coach, I know that if I want to grow my business to a certain extent and um, you know increase my income, it probably has a lot to do with coaching more and speaking more and perhaps writing more, right? And so those are the strategies that begin to fall out here that I, I know I need to be doing to get to my goal in the year, okay? Now A is where we start to assume the barriers. I'm like, yeah, that's a really nice road, Marty, but what I see here is a roadblock and a fallen tree, you know, and a broken road here. You know, this isn't going to be as easy as just, you know, a trot along the road. Just let yourself capture those, right? Because, you know, they're, at least from a perception standpoint, they're real. I say assume because, you know, time will tell and you're not actually there yet. But we all assume that there will be certain obstacles in accomplishing our goals. And it helps to be honest with them so that we can then confront them and figure out whether, whether they're real or how we can move around them. And we'll talk a little bit more about the barriers. Um, a little bit later. And then L is where it begins. And L is about leading forward with just one step. Oops. One step, right? Here's your L. A step, and a step, and a step, right? Because we just have to begin, right? And so this is a good, just a visual for helping you think about the big picture and the small details, right? Sometimes people get stuck here, right? I have this great big vision. I have no idea where to start. And sometimes we're so focused on our next step, head down, that we lose sight of where we're going or why we were doing it in the first place, right? So with this visual in mind and, you know, vital to remind you, it helps you to figure out where you might get stuck, and then you can begin to sort it out. You don't have trouble making goals. You wouldn't be where you are now, you wouldn't be this successful if you didn't have a pretty good grasp, but we get stuck sometimes. And actually, as we're in growth mode, right, you're all small firm owners, you know, sometimes we just get stuck because we're thinking of bigger and bigger things, and we don't run it through the same filter of, okay, what's the big picture, why am I doing this? How do I think I'm going to get there? And then what's one, you know, one step that I can be taking now that will get me on my way? Okay. So my question for you is, where do you feel you get stuck in this process? Time is a big part of this, right? So some some people say, you know, I don't have any problem with the process. I just don't actually have time to sit down and think about it, right? And that's where it's actually really helpful to carve out some time. You know, if you're on a calendar year or, you know, some other fiscal year, I mean, I think I as a small business owner just think January to December, um, carve out some time to just think through it in, you know, in the beginning of the year, whatever, you know, whatever time you can allow to it, even if it's January, even if it's February, you're better off than, you know, not getting to it, right? But time is a huge piece of it, right? I, you know, I get this. Intellectually, I get this, and I just don't have time. Um, accountability can be helpful, too, um, and I think that's why that's why a lot of people like working with a coach. I do a lot of goal setting sessions at this time of year. Maybe just one session with a small business owner to help. Like, I know that if I have an hour set aside, I'm going to do it. But you can do that with peers, too, right? And there's a great knowledge exchange that can ha happen in doing that. Let's have a coffee date. Let's have a coffee date and talk about our strategies for next year. It's a wealth of knowledge in this room, I'm sure, that you could share. 
Um, there are other ways that people get stuck on the process. Um, sometimes, some of the things that come up are prioritization. You know, there are a couple of first steps that I could take. You know, how do I know which one to take first? Um, procrastination. And procrastination is a big one because it's usually rooted in something else. So it might be rooted in what you were talking about, Jim, where like the barriers, right? Sometimes procrastination just comes from, well, what's the point? I'm going to hit this roadblock eventually. You know, I might as well work on something else where I've got a little bit more smooth sailing. Um, time management is a piece. Um, you know, losing losing this big picture view and feeling like, okay, so I'm going to take this next next step forward, but I really need to reconfirm what it's all about. Okay, so there are a lot of different places that um, people get stuck. How many of you would say that you're crystal clear on your personal and professional goals for 2015? I'll turn away and then you can raise your hand. <laughs> okay, well I brought a worksheet because worksheets are fun. Um, and this is this is a this is a structure that I use with um, a lot of the clients that I'm working with, whether it's a starting point for a longer partnership in helping someone towards their goals, or if it's just one time session. I actually was working with um, a hotel group recently and the HR director brought me in to do a goal setting session with each of their each of their you know supervisor, manager, and director level folks to just have 45 minutes to sit down and think about your goals for next year and how you're gonna get there with the idea that all right well we'll check in at the end of the year but we're gonna you know we're gonna launch you out of the gate. Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a few minutes. It's nice having a group this size actually because we can do this a little bit more interactive. Take a few minutes and to the extent that you know them and have articulated them to yourself, write down your goals, one to three goals that you have for this year. And I'm not taking these papers back, they're yours. <laughs> They won't be collected. Um, who would be interested in sharing a goal with the group? The goal is uh, obviously to hire a person. Hire someone. Okay, to hire someone by the end of the year. That would be nice. Okay. Thank you. Who else wants to share? An example. Yeah. I want to get um, the insurance needed. Get insurance. Okay. Which is uh, there are big barriers, lack of capital. Okay. Somebody yell out another one while I'm facing this way. you know exactly what that kind of project is and having at least one more would feel really good by the end of the year right because it stretches you in a new direction yes. yeah or more of the direction that you want to go yeah. right anyone else have did you have a hand in there well, I didn't, but, um, what do you want to share anyway you know uh, there's a lot of overlap between what's already been said but um, I Added one for myself. I just called it to uh, make the practice pay the bills. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm sure we can all relate to that. All right. Somebody on, on every single person sheet, there's something that represents money, right? <laughs> some amount, some break even, some profit, right? Read one more. Sarah. Uh, 
I want to change how I think other people perceive me. Great. Okay. So, thank you for sharing these examples. Um, getting insurance, right? Here was your list of barriers. I'm doing this right to left for some reason. <laughs> but money was a perceived barrier, right? What do you see as a barrier to getting more of the kinds of projects? More well, usually, uh, if you're looking for a certain type of project, you, you need experience in the type of project. Okay. So, you know, it's kind of a, you know, circular, a vicious circle. So, depending on, this is, this, is, this is familiar in some way to all of you, right? There's some kind of project that you love working on that you want more of while you're reducing those projects that you've been taking as you grow, right? We all take on these projects, we're like, I don't love it, but it helps with this part, yeah. right? So how can I shift it so I'm doing more of what I want, right? And the barriers, depending on who you are and your background, could come, you know, they could be different, right? But it might be, you know, how do I get more of that project if I don't have the experience to show for it already? How do I get exposed to the people who want the clients that want that kind of work, right? And then that, what, what, what's interesting here about connections is actually this is more of a strategy, right? So in teasing out what the barriers are here, you're actually already starting to talk about your solutions, right? If you, if you have a sense that it's about networking, right? It's about who you know and talking about what you're interested in doing. This is actually not a barrier, right? This is, this is about, this is where you start to formulate your strategy. Yes, I suppose so. I mean, another barrier which also could be a strategy is the number of people in the company. So I guess that's a strategy is to bring in more people Bring in more people, you need more money. You're talking about capacity, to right? Have more money, you have to have the project, so it's just a vicious circle. So Is that what you mean, though? Like the yes. capacity to, to yes. take on the work, yes. right? What I'm going to focus on, just for the purpose of our hour, is the fact that as soon as you map that out, your goal and your, and your perceived barriers, your, your brain starts working on the solution. How many of you actually wrote down some strategies, even though I didn't get to the point of asking you to do it? Okay. How many of you got stuck somewhere on a strategy for a particular goal? Yeah. Lucinda, do you want to share one with me? Well, it was kind of connected to the networking. Like my goal was actually to get out there more so I could network. Um, my barrier was I have just um, spent the last three and a half years working in Singapore, um, so I don't know many people <laughs> here, and I've just been. Um, So feeling like you just got back and they don't have a network, right? But then that sort of starts to inform building the network, right? So having a sense of, of solutions is really, you know, starting to already fall out, right? So fill that into your strategies, right? Like, but then it begs the question, how do you build a network, right? But that's where you've gotten so specific on the goal and the barrier and what the solutions are that you can you can delve into that specifically, right? How do people build networks? Oh, they go to events, they you know, have conversations like these, right? And you start listing out some of those action items that could result in those little L's, right? Where does it begin? I'm not going to have you know, the network that I had before Singapore instantly now that I'm back, but where does it start, right? And that's where giving yourself those little L's, those little steps forward rather than being like, well, that's it, I have no network. And that sometimes gives us that paralysis that we're talking about, right? <clears throat> Some questions that it's really helpful to ask yourself when you get to the strategies piece is, for starters, when have I done this before? How much of this is entirely new, right? So in the example of you know networks, which is coming up before, when have I been in a position, professionally or personally, where I had no community, I had no network, and I was trying to build one, where did I start, right? You have these life lessons and these life experiences and your successes so far in building your business, 
to draw from, right? So, I don't know, does somebody, does somebody have an example to share of, of how you started to build your network right when you started your business? Well, I mean, there are a million opportunities. Just name one. And to join, to join an organization. Join uh, an organization. You just join, yeah. you know, join or get elected and sit on the board of directors. Yep. Uh, uh, ace mentor. Yeah, volunteering. Mm -hmm. Volunteering. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce. There is more so dinner, much. More dinner out. parties with friends, because most of our early work came from our friends. Yeah, yeah. And, and, a, and a lot of my friends didn't realize we were on our own, so once... Right, right let, let people know you're looking for projects, you're looking for work. You know, very often you don't get the project from the talk person you talk to, but you're mm -hmm. So this is, this is not to diminish that feeling like a barrier, right? Like, well, look, we've all got networks, right? You can have one too. It's, it's more, wow, when you focus in on that part and you ask yourself, when have I been here before? When have I already had to do this? I wouldn't have come this far if I didn't know how to get out and connect with people, right? So how do I start small, right? How do I talk to my, I love that example. How do I just talk to my friends about what I, you know, what I do. I volunteer at the, I personally, I volunteer at the Marine Mammal Center. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it. And I take care of seals and sea lions in Sausalito. And I've gotten so much business from other volunteers just because I'm out in the world talking about what I do. It's kind of crazy, right? So the more excited you are about what you're doing or where you're trying to go or even your challenges, right? Like dinner party, help me strategize, right? Small groups of professionals, little mastermind groups, right? So when you get stuck on that strategies piece, you know, digging into your own experience as a start is really helpful. I've been here before. When have I had to do this? This isn't new. It just looks different, and it just feels scary because there's money riding on it, and there are other employees, that sort of thing. But somehow, in some way, shape, or form, I've done this before, and I have some, some life experience, some professional experience to draw from. Um, and if I still get stuck, what resources are available? How do I tap into organizations like this? How do I tap into my friends and other people who just like teasing apart challenges, okay? Um, what I love about some of these examples um, is asking, well, so what's the metric? How do you know when you actually got there, right? How do you know when you get to say, yes, I accomplished that goal? So hiring someone is pretty straightforward, right? You've either got that person in the office at the end of the year or you don't. You know, a money goal. Not that easy. Uh, no, no, I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm saying it's easy to know if you succeeded, right? True. So I'm talking about success metrics for your goals and being very clear on whether you succeeded or not. Hiring someone, a dollar goal, you know, this particular growth of the company or your, uh, your profits. That's straightforward. Maybe put a number on this. You said I want more than at least one new project, right? This is the stuff that gets interesting, right? Get out there more, change my perceptions, because they're, they're really, you know why they're important for your business, but I wanna know, how will you know when you've succeeded? And I'm gonna pick on you, Sarah, because you gave me this one. Change perception, <clears throat> what's your success metric? If I were given more responsibility, that would be their perception be changed. Okay. And how would you know that you've gotten more responsibility? Does it look like a certain type of project? Is it a certain size project? Is it managing a certain number of people? Yeah. Something like that, right? So now you're getting specific, right? And what I hear is that the goal is actually more responsibility within your organization. And this is your strategy, right? So that's where we start flip-flopping a little bit and realizing this is the means to your end. This is, this is your journey. My little mountain's gone. This is your journey, and you're hoping that by the end of this year, you're feeling empowered to do more at your company, right? Then we can talk about what's the perception that you're trying to change and how do people get perceived as you know, more aggressive rather than passive. Oh, it's more about speaking up in meetings or, you know, taking ownership of certain things. And then you can get really tactical and see yourself getting there, right? So the really valuable thing about sort of running it through these filters is recognizing that sometimes we're not specific enough in our goals to know that we've actually accomplished them. And I want you to be at the end of the year 
saying, you know, Marty, come back, I want to tell you, you checked all the boxes off. Right? But you, gotta, you, you have to set yourself up to actually know that you've done so. Um, how many of you are familiar with this acronym SMART, doing SMART goals? It's tossed around corporately a little bit. Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-oriented. It's a great thing to remember when you're mapping out your goals. And measurable is the, is the one that falls off the most, right? It's hard to measure getting out there, and it's hard to, hard to measure you know, a changed perception. It's not hard to measure a number of projects, the size of your staff, you know, your financial goal, okay? So this is something that when you're mapping out your goals, um, and it's listed on the bottom there as a reminder, it says this is smart, right? Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the people that I took through this program recently said, I wanna be, you know, I wanna be an expert in something. Right? Or, oh, I'm trying to think of this other example. Um, grow the business, develop people skills. That was what I was talking to um, a general manager at a hotel. They're really valuable things for small business owners, right? But how will you know when you're developed, right? And then we, we, we continued the conversation. He said, well, you know, if there's an award, you know, a, like a, an associate satisfaction award, like that's a really big deal. That's how you know that you're well liked within the organization. Well, so let's talk about, you know, what are the criteria for, for achieving that, right? And then you're getting really specific, okay? So this is really helpful, both from the standpoint of looking at the sort of the big mountain goal, how will I know when I'm at the top, but also on a daily basis, right? So that take a step, take a step, take a step, the goals that you set for yourself on a quarterly basis or on a monthly basis or on a weekly basis. Are they smart, right? You can set a weekly intention, and I have all my clients do this. You know, think about what your goals are for the next week, and make sure that they're smart, right? Make sure that you'll know a week from now whether you actually accomplish what you set out to do, okay? And, and that's where achievable and realistic and time-oriented are also really helpful, right? So whether this is the year out or a week from now, we put a time frame on it by which Point we want to accomplish it. Achievable is, you know, can I get to space next week? Probably not, <laughs> right? Like really just in the, in, the, in the broadest definition of the word, can it be done? And then is it realistic for you to be doing that, you know, in the next week, right? <clears throat> so any goal that you have on whatever time frame, because that, that's this part, pass it through this filter and make sure that you'll know when you get there. And then the other acronym that I put on the bottom um, which is really helpful on those little L's I'm moving forward is AIM. <clears throat> We've got the acceptable minimum, the ideal, and a telephone. Sorry, sorry. So, you know, in thinking about what you want to accomplish over the next week, you've got your ideal, you know, and I, I always use sort of the the going to the gym analogy, or getting some exercise that everybody can relate to. Well, the ideal is that I'm gonna get exercise five days a week, right? But at a minimum, really I'd like to go just once because I haven't been there in a really long time. And you set these brackets, and then you give yourself space in the middle, right? Well, I've got a big project, you know, the in-laws are in town, so the acceptable, I'm sorry, the medium is what falls between the ideal and the acceptable minimum that somewhere in here, you have been successful in moving your goals forward. But it puts parameters on it that gives you some flexibility so that at the end of the week, you haven't passed or failed, right? You've moved forward and you've set up that intention at the beginning of the week that based on what you know is happening in your life and in your workspace, that this is achievable, right? And so Aim Smart is on the bottom as a reminder there. Um, just as a little, you know, a little tool so that if you are somebody who likes to set up weekly intentions when, you, when you've taken your bigger year-long goal and broken it down into what I need to be accomplishing on a weekly basis. These kinds, this, this way of thinking and this way of sort of filtering your intentions is a really good way to make sure that you keep moving forward. And that's what I've got to share.